hello, hello. All right, in today's video, we are going to dive into my top 15 tips to staying lean in your off season. First, let's dive into just a few of the benefits. So you're gonna look and feel good all year round instead of just a small portion of time while you're in your prep. You're gonna be happy with your physique year round instead of just in that tiny little bit of time you're spending in prep before your show. So it's awesome to feel and look good and be happy with your physique 24 seven or 365. It's going to just be from a mental standpoint, a lot healthier because you're not feeling so like, oh, I'm not liking how I'm looking in the off season. I feel extra fluffy. You're still going to have those feelings. They're not going to be as extreme when you are maintaining a relatively lean physique between your preps. You're going to be able to avoid the negative impacts of yo-yo dieting because that's all it is when you're dieting down for a show and then putting on a whole bunch of extra body fat. It is just a structured version of extreme yo-yo dieting. And some of those negative impacts can be physical, not to mention the impact it has on your skin. Your skin only has so much give and take until it just kind of like, dude, no, I'm not bouncing back after this time. So that is an often overlooked thing. But then there's also a lot of negatives that come in the form of just how you're feeling about your body, how you're feeling about yourself and how you're feeling about your choices. So you can avoid all those negative impacts by, by making sure that you are intentional about your off season weight gain. Another great benefit is staying lean in your off season has big impacts on your next prep. It's going to make your next prep easier. It's going to make it so you don't have to be as extreme and it's going to make it so it probably doesn't have to be as long all because you have less body fat that you're going to need to lose to get stage ready again. Basically, you're going to be able to enjoy your next prep a lot more. A good prep is set up with a good off season. So oftentimes you'll see people say, well, people can't just stay lean in their off season, Sam. You have to be a genetic freak in order to be able to do that. And I am definitely not saying you need to stay stage lean or even within a few pounds of your stage weight. Absolutely not. What I am meaning is a nice, healthy, athletic level of body fat in your off season. Like an athlete style, you are an athlete, you're a bikini athlete, and we want your off season to reflect that. And generally speaking, this is about 10 to 13, 15-ish percent above your stage weight. So we're going to use me as an example. I'm 5'6", about 122 on stage. That would mean in my off season, I want to hang out around 134 to 138. A completely reasonable, doable, and healthy weight for someone who is 5'6". So I am not saying stay stage lean. Don't gain any body fat at all in your off season. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is staying lean in your off season means keeping an athletic level of body fat, even just a fit level of body fat in your off season. And it's going to reap so many benefits, not just while you're in off season, but down the road for your next prep. So it's nothing crazy, nothing unreasonable. I'm not expecting you to stay shreddy spaghetti freaking 24 7 365 it's just maintaining a reasonable level of body fat without going from 122 on stage to 165 in your off season so we want to make sure we're staying within that like 10 to 13 ish percent obviously some things are going to impact that like length of your off season which that's a whole nother video and then where you actually stage lean and then what your future plans are, of course. So there's going to be other things that impact that, but that's going to be a very good general rule of thumb. So nothing crazy, totally reasonable, a nice healthy level of body fat in your off season, not stage lean. You do not have to be a genetic freak to maintain a healthy body weight. So don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise. You can definitely do it. Okay. So let's get into the tips. All right, so the first ones are probably the most, I don't know. I don't know if they're the most obvious, but they're, this first one is going to have the biggest impact, and it is keep your coach post-show. 
at least four to eight weeks, if not just keeping them for your entire off season. Because remember, off seasons are where physiques are built. Prep is just where they're revealed. So off season is equally as important as your prep. But if you're not going to keep it your whole, keep your coach the whole off season, at least keep them four to eight weeks post show to help you stay on track because you're going to have that outside accountability. It is amazing how much of a difference having this outside set of eyes can really make on whether or not you stick to the plan. Also, coaches are going to help set realistic goals post-show. They're going to reassure you with how things are going because post-show can get kind of crazy. Like you gain two pounds, you're like, oh my God, what is happening? And they're like, no, that's what we're supposed to be doing, girl. Like it's fine. So making, they're going to help with setting realistic goals. They're going to help you keep that like, like when you get prep goggles, but this would be like post-show goggles. I don't know, but they're going to help you be realistic about what is happening. And they're also going to help be realistic if like you're going too much off plan as well. So they're just going to help you keep it accountable. Just knowing that someone cares just as much as you do about your post-show isn't, can be enough to keep you like, I really want to like eat this whole bag of chips, but coach does not expect me to, and then I'll have to tell them and then they'll be bummed and I just don't want to have to do that, so I'm just not going to do it. For example, number two, do not skip your check-ins. No matter what. I don't care if you did eat that whole bag of chips, plus a freaking cake, and a gallon of ice cream. Two, take your check-ins, do your check-ins, submit them to your coach. These are the check-ins that you actually need to do more. And why? Again, it's accountability. The more you skip a check-in because you had a bad week, the easier it's going to be to continue to do that behavior. So you do it once, well, you're like, well, if I mess up again, I'll just skip my, skip my check-in again. So it'll be like it didn't happen. It still happened. You just aren't taking the necessary steps to get back on track or however you want to phrase that to stick to your plan. So do your check-ins no matter what, especially on the bad weeks. Your coach wants to see them. And even if you don't, they need to see them and it's going to really help you stay focused. So make that promise to yourself. I will not miss a check-in no matter what. Three, weigh yourself daily. So this isn't going to change from prep. Continue to do this. Basically what this does is make sure you're gaining body fat at a reasonable rate post-show. One, this is gonna help your coach if they need to make adjustments to your calories or your cardio or your workouts. And it's gonna help you see like, oh, went a little too crazy. Gonna reel it back and get back on plan a little bit more. So it can be a bit of a reality check and reality checks are necessary, especially post-show. So ignoring it is not the answer, especially if something's like not going according to plan, you're, ha you're having trouble sticking to your post-show. Ignoring it's not going to help being aware and being like, yeah, this is, this is how it's going. Um, again, with that's going to help you stay accountable to what is actually going on and the reality of your post-show. Number four, keep tracking your food, keep following your meal plan, whatever you were doing, keep up with your diet maintenance. Basically, you want to stay in control of your diet. You want to stay aware of what you are eating. So even on days, just like with the check-ins and everything like that, even on days where you're like, wow, I just probably ate 8,000 million calories, log them. Maybe you did. And that's impressive. And oh, well, it happened. If you log it or not, it happened. But if you log it, you at least have that data and you can figure out what is going on from there. And then sometimes just the act of logging and knowing you have to put that in can be enough to be like, oh. I should probably not have another bag of chips, even though I already ate this one, because instead of 2,500 calories, I'm going to be eating 3,500 calories if I do that or whatever it may be. So it can just kind of, again, a reality check and some accountability in there. All right. So number five is avoid reverse dieting. So what I mean by this is reverse dieting. A lot of times you'll see people kind of just like reverse what they didn't prep. They'll say, their calories ended at 1,500. The week before, like two weeks before that, they were at 16. Two weeks before that, they were at 18. They'll just reverse that. So they'll just do their prep diet, but backward. And that's not what you want. All that's going to do is prolong your deficit. 
It's just like a slightly smaller deficit than it was the week before. And that's going to make it feel harder. So what you want to do post show is go right back up to estimated maintenance. Now, this is probably going to be not even probably this is 99.9% .9 sure going to be lower than where you started prep. You're a smaller human. Simple as that. You've been dieting. It's going to be less, but you want to bump it up to estimated maintenance. Does that mean you're going to get it hundred percent right? Or your coach is going to be like freaking nail on the head? No, you might, you probably will have to adjust, but the goal is to stop the deficit and not prolong it unnecessarily. So avoid reverse dieting, bump yourself right back up to estimated maintenance calories. Number six, keep food consistent. So don't do a total 180 with your food choices. Stick to mostly what you've been already eating on your prep. If your calories are a decent amount higher, maybe you can fit in a few more things that you couldn't when you were at the end of your prep. Maybe you had to take out your whole egg from your breakfast or something, and now you can add that back in. But don't just be like, you know what? I'm off prep. I'm going to just eat chips and McDonald's and whole bunches of all this stuff I haven't had in 16, 20 weeks and just do a total 180 with your diet. We do not want to do that. Stick to mostly what you've been eating during prep. Now, as you progress through your post show and your off season, the variety and the different food choices can definitely expand, but right away after the show, keep food consistent. And really you should be wanting to eat healthy your whole off season anyway. So overall food choices should be fairly consistent and still eating whole minimally processed foods. Seven, keep protein high. Obvious reasons, it's gonna help keep you fuller. It's gonna help you build muscle. We wanna keep protein high in the off season. That doesn't mean excessively high. I don't want you eating so much protein you're sacrificing other the other macros, but we want to keep protein relatively high. Number eight, eat your carbs. Carbs fuel your workout off season. The whole goal, we want to build muscle. So make sure you're eating carbs to fuel your workouts, get your hormones all back to normal. Carbs will help with that making and carbs are just freaking delicious. When you're having enough carbs, you're also going to feel more energized. Your mood is going to feel better. It's going to just overall make it easier to maintain during your off season if you're eating enough carbs. Number nine, eat your fiber. So have enough fiber. Hit your minimum fiber goals. Fiber has a ton of health benefits of like disease fighting, reduces your risk of cancer, helps with better digestion, helps with your gut microbiome, all of this good stuff. Fiber is going to be beneficial. It also helps keep you fuller and more satisfied, which is going to mean you're going to feel fuller on less calories, hence making it easier to stay lean in your off season because it's going to be easier to hit your calorie goals, especially when Oh, show this is super important too, where it's a little bit harder to really want to stick to your plan. Number 10, keep up with the intense lifts. So don't just drop off. Don't just stop lifting because you're done with your show. Continue with your lifting and make it intense. You're putting all those calories, protein, carbs, all of that to good use and building lean mass. So you can come back even better for your next show. I don't have enough fingers to do 11. So 11. Stay active between your workouts. So don't think just because you're getting in your lifts that you're doing enough. So, I mean, you are doing enough, but don't feel like, I don't want you to just be like, I did my workout and I can be a bump on a log all day. Make sure you stay active between your workouts. Pick up some other hobbies. Be someone that hikes, maybe even just like mini golf or something. Get some walks in. It can be whatever, but just make sure you're staying active between workouts and just throughout your day. It doesn't mean you can never sit down. That's definitely not what I'm saying, but don't turn into a giant couch potato outside of your workouts is I guess basically what I'm saying. 12, something you can do in a prolonged off season, say you're going to be in an off season for one, two plus years, maybe even like 10 months, 12 months, 18 months is utilize mini cuts to help you stay within decent body fat levels. So what this is, is just every so often go into a short, semi-intense cut not very long these would be very short um like four six weeks at the most where you are using these strategically throughout your build season to keep body fat levels within a reasonable range 
especially if you're taking a very prolonged off season, you can't just keep putting on more and more weight and expect to be able to like come right back and stay within that ideal, that ideal range. So utilizing mini cuts throughout your off season can be super beneficial. Now don't, don't do four weeks of a build and be like, ah, I feel fluffy. I need to diet again. That's not what I'm saying. They need to be strategic. You need to go over them with your coach and how you want to use them. And they should be used sparingly. And definitely you should be building in your off season vastly more than you are cutting. I think in my last, my last off season before this previous, before my prep, I just ended, I was in off season for a little over two years and I did maybe eight to 12. I, I'd have to go back and look. I can't remember the top of my head. Sorry. But between eight and 12 weeks worth of dieting throughout that two years. And it wasn't all at one spot. I think I did like a four week and a six week mini cut at various points in time to help keep my body fat levels in check. So yeah, utilize mini cuts throughout your, your build to keep levels where they want. And this is more for obviously extended build phases, not if you're doing a six month off season, like that's, that's barely an off season to be honest. Um, and that's where actually the recommendation for how much you should gain would definitely vary if you're only taking like six months or something like that. So the recommendation is more for a longer extended off season. On that note, number 13 tip to, so number 13, my 13th tip to staying lean in the off season is actually taking long enough off season. So off season, staying lean, maintaining healthy body fat levels, everything like that, having good healthy preps, they all kind of combine and work together. So if your off seasons are all like six months, seven months, six months, you're not giving your body time to fully recover between preps. And it's going to, it's going to compound the stress that it's having on your body, the adaptations, which are perfectly normal and perfectly healthy that happen in your body, um, with metabolic rate and all of that good stuff. Um, so actually take long enough off seasons to let your body recover and get everything back to like, you know, a good homeostasis and how long that off season needs to be. It varies and it depends on a whole bunch of different things, but take a long enough off season. Don't just keep hopping into preps because you're feeling FOMO or something like that. Three months is not an off season. I'm sorry. If that's a break between shows, you really should just be maintaining pretty much stage leanness at that point. Maybe not exactly, but pretty dang close if you're taking that short of a off season. That's not really an off season. It's like a break. It's like you just had a long time between shows essentially at that point. Think off season should be longer than your prep and a decent amount longer than your prep if you actually want to see some good changes. Number 14, keep it sustainable. Don't get too crazy about all the little minor details. The best off season, the best way to stay lean in off season is to make it sustainable. You want to be able to enjoy your off season. So for me, and probably for a lot of people is you don't want to have to follow a strict meal plan in off season. So this would be maybe shifting to a macro or calorie based approach. This would mean you're not tracking every single gram of every single thing that you're eating. You are going out to eat. You're roughly tracking for things like that. Like it's more of a, you want to make it part of your lifestyle, not turn it into just an extended prep where you're just eating more. Essentially, you're trying to find that balance, but balance for a competitor. If you want to be a bikini athlete and be in the game long term, what balance looks like for you is going to be different than what balance would look like for someone that's just interested in being a tad bit healthier, maybe a little bit fitter. So their balance is going to look different than an athlete's balance. And that's okay. That's still balance. But you have to find that happy place to be a bikini competitor that wants to improve and continue in the sport and still being able to enjoy life, but not go from one extreme all the way to the other extreme. You need to find that good, I mean, quote unquote, middle ground. It's not really probably going to be middle, like compared to most people, it's still going to be more towards the athlete side, but finding that what is going to make it. So for me, that's, I still go out to eat. I roughly track those. I will sometimes have some snacks that I don't weigh out and measure. I'll try I'll be like, I had about this much and I'll track that. So keeping it not neurotic or like getting too anal about it in the off season. And number 15 is focus on building fitness, not just muscle. I feel like as bodybuilders, 
a lot of times we get really focused on like the only thing that matters is building muscle. But if you want to have a good lean off season, think about building fitness. And when you think about that, what does fitness involve? It involves getting in your cardio, it involves being active, it involves eating healthy. All of these goals are going to help you stay lean in your off season. When you just focus on building muscle and that's your only thing, you're like I just need to put on as much muscle as possible, you're going to eat a lot more. You're not going to be doing your cardio. You're going to be worried that cardio or staying active in between might take away from your lifts. So like, oh my gosh, that's the only thing that matters is my lifts and eating food. So making, and then also that can, like I said, not getting too, um, too focused on all the details and like making it unsustainable. If you're only focused on that goal, it's going to leave a lot of life not lived. So you want to make sure that you're just focusing on building fitness, find other goals that you can do, make sure, have a goal to get your cardio fitness up, be eating healthier, improve your health markers. Like all of that is going to help you live lean in the off season because that's how people that are just health and fitness people maintain their body composition maintain their physiques is they just focus on being fit and healthy and they don't have an on off switch with I'm in prep or I'm not it's I this is just how I live and I live healthy and fit so that is my last one focus on building fitness not just muscle I know that sounds weird but thinking of it in a bigger scope can really be helpful. So yeah, those are my 15 top tips for staying lean in the off season. And um, well, part of it is you, I want you to be happy with your physique year round. That's not the only thing. You also want to be healthy and fit year round too. And you want to be in this sport for a long time. And the best way to be sustainable is to not have terrible agonizingly grindy preps and the best way to not have that type of prep is to have a good off season so we're setting you up for a better easier more enjoyable next prep which means a more sustainable and longer career as a bikini athlete all right that is all i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions please drop them in the comments um, if you have any ideas or anything you would like to see on the channel, please let me know. And yes, that is plaster. There was a hole in my wall and Justin's fixing it currently. Um, he's going to paint it tomorrow, but I wanted to film today. So it's just there. Sorry. Um, but yeah, also if you are interested in rocking your first or your next bikini competition, head to the link in the description to check out my coaching services and we can set up a free consultation call to talk about your goals, talk about coaching, go over all that good stuff and get you to stage. All right, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.